In today's video, we're going to talk about how to measure some unknown coax, get some of uh, the characteristics out of it. I was at an antique radio flea market this weekend and picked up this uh, this hunk of coax, and I, I grabbed it because the insulation on it seemed like it was a uh, nice heat resistant, like a Teflon, and that turns out to be the case. So I figured I'd uh, want to characterize uh, what its characteristic impedance is and what the velocity factor is. The first thing I did, since it uh, wasn't too terribly long, I just uh, spread it out and measured its length. And it's uh, 348 inches or 29 feet or about 88.4 centimeters long. In order to calculate the velocity factor of the cable, we need to measure how long it takes a signal to go down the cable or the propagation delay of the cable. So. Uh, I will use a method that I used uh, in a previous video, and I'll link that below, by sending a fast pulse down the uh, cable and measuring how long it takes the reflection from the open end to come back. To do this, I'll just use this uh, fast edge pulse generator. Uh, again, I've shown in a previous video, uh, linked below. This generates about a 2 nanosecond edge. Makes it real convenient uh, for sending a nice fast pulse you know, out the coax cable out the other end and we'll uh, measure how long it takes that uh, pulse to hit the end of the cable and come back. So we'll hook this uh, up to the front of the scope. And then what I did to prepare the cable, you know, nothing really critical here, I just took a little uh, banana adapter, it was just a nice convenient way of connecting up the end of the, the coax uh, to a BNC connector. And of course you could do this any number of ways. You know, keeping the connections reasonably short, but you know we're going to get some reflections off of that, but that's no big deal. So now I'll power up uh, the pulse generator. Again, what's going on here is uh, we've got the pulse coming out of the pulse generator, and it's uh, going off to um, the scope. You know, a little bit of an impedance discontinuity. That's part of what's partly what's responsible for the ringing here, but no big deal. And then going out and being launched into the cable. Uh, the signal goes out, hits the end of the cable, bounces back, and then adds up to the uh, into the original signal again. So the delay here, this pedestal, is equal to the round trip delay through the coax. And we can easily measure that by throwing a couple of cursors on here. And I'm going to position those, you know, at about the same point of the incident edge, and then uh, about the same point on the reflected edge there. And we can measure the re the delay there is about 85.2 nanoseconds. So, that, so that's our round trip delay. So now that we know the round trip delay is 85.2 nanoseconds, we just divide that by 2 and we know the propagation delay from one end of the cable to the other is 42.6 nanoseconds. So now we know enough to calculate the velocity factor. Because really the velocity factor can be defined as, you know, what is the measured speed through the medium, in this case the coax, that's equal to the velocity factor times the speed in free space. And we know the speed of light in free space, and now we know the measured speed so we can calculate velocity factor. So here it is for both uh, types of units. So I know the measured speed was 348, nano, 348 inches divided by 42.6 nanoseconds. And I know the free space speed of light is 11.8 inches per nanosecond. So we just have the velocity factor there, so I just need to divide this side by 11.8. Similarly, on, in the metric units, uh, 88.4 centimeters divided by 42.6 nanoseconds is equal to the velocity factor times 30 centimeters per nanosecond. So, uh, in other words, we basically take the measured length divided by the propagation delay divided by the free space speed, making sure you keep the units all the same. And if we do that, we come up with a velocity factor of 0.69. And that's uh, quite reasonable and definitely in the ballpark of a typical you know, coax used for RF applications. So now we know the length, we know the velocity factor, now we just want to measure the, uh, the output impedance. And I'm assuming it's going to be 50 ohms, but uh, it might not be, so let's go take a look at one way to measure that. Now there are a number of ways to measure the impedance of coax, but uh, I'm going to do a real simple easy thing here. Just took the end of the coax and prepared uh, the end of it here, and I'm just going to solder on a low value uh, variable resistor. Uh, onto the end. Now this doesn't have to be pretty, it's just uh, a real quick temporary connection to make the measurements. So we'll just uh, we'll just tack these guys in here. Boom. And boom. Now when the termination impedance equals the coax impedance, there will be no reflection. So all we need to do is adjust this resistor until the reflection goes away. Now let's take the cursors off here and uh, stick a screwdriver in here 
Now, as I see, as I adjust that resistor value, you can see the value of that uh, reflection moving back and forth. And if I get it so that it's basically a flat line right there, now the resistance of this uh, potentiometer or trimmer is equal to the coax impedance. We just need to go measure that. Okay, so we'll turn off power from the uh, generator, and just to be sure, we'll disconnect the coax from the end of that uh, generator circuit, and uh, just take our own meter here and measure the value of that resistor. And here we are, 50.9 ohms. That's pretty darn close to uh, 50 ohms. So that was it. Uh, just a, a nice, nice way to take a piece of unknown coax. Uh, we just physically measured its length, uh, measured the propagation delay to calculate the velocity factor, and, uh, and then used a variable resistor to measure its impedance. So now I know everything I need to know about this coax to use it in some of my RF applications. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks again for watching.